you joined the school two years ago. Why are you asking for, uh, you know, certificate of uh, tax and all of that before so, uh, you have to show certificate of tax, tax so, even though they claim that education is free in Lagos, but they were targeting the Igbos. Because of this, eh? Many, many Yorubas have been unable to take their children to government school in Lagos. Those who have money, they will just take their children to any Labule Labule eh? primary school, be kindergarten, they call them private. It is the same when they were demolishing people's shops. The target are the Igbos, yes. But there are Yorubas, there are other Nigerians who are also shop owners, in fact, building owners. But well, they just want to get rid of the Igbos and get all of that. So all of these are existing, you know, no matter how much they pretend. And if you don't believe, wait till you become that victim. Then you go come clear, but it will, it will be too late then. So when they are demolishing people's homes everywhere and they say uh, they are targeting the Igbos, are being con of course, they will demolish. You can hear them. You can hear the Igbo landlord or the resident, Abby. But that doesn't mean that uh, they are all Igbos in that place. But because they want to make sure that what happened in 2023 never happened again. That's what they said. And they promise you that it will never happen again. You will never have that courage to stand up and say, you want to choose anybody that they did, they, they did not choose in an election. That is why all of this is happening. They are destroying the same Lagos because of that same tribal bigotry that has become part of their own uh, political uh, tool and all that. But while they are doing all of that, they are also hurting Yorubas and non-Yorubas alike. I just hope that one of these days, a lot of you will be bold enough to come out and speak. That as they are dealing with those they consider as their enemies, the Igbos, because everything is Igbo, 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 here and there now. And it, once you hear them shouting Igbo, this Igbo, that Igbo, that start calling you Igbo, this or that, even if you are a Yoruba, just know that uh, they are trying to cover up for something, something that they don't want to take responsibility for. And you can look around, it, it doesn't take time for you to know. As they are using their head for bigotry, they are not considering them, eh? in their profligacies, in their stealing, in their looting and sharing. They are not. So I just thought I should say that. I remember that we had a, we had a show on uh, when people should begin to divest, divest their own uh, investment. There are better places across Yoruba land. You might see some of this, uh, uh, what do you call it? All this, uh, Sewage uh, dwellers, Oshogwa, Lima, here and there. The only place the fascists eh, have managed to maintain power and the ideology of agroism is in Lagos. Even they, even though they do have, uh, they are think alike, as well as uh, uh, their stages, he's got them across Yoruba land. But they have not been able eh, to reciprocate what uh, or recreate what uh, Tifnumbu has uh, established in Lagos, a fiefdom. They have not been able to create that in Yoruba land. Okay? Other part of uh, Yoruba land, as you must know, they have nothing in common with this uh, Omwalis who have done everything to help us as Yoruba people in joining the Alimajirism where Ranka Dede, Ranka Dede would become our own culture and tradition born out of uh, illiteracy and as well as uh, social conditioning that's exactly their own uh, theory. And if you go to the rest of uh, Yoruba land, that's where you see people of sound mind who don't think bigots or bigotry, like these criminals who are suffering and smiling 
and they blame it on everyone else but themselves. Mm -hmm. I'll take you somewhere quickly. Shore says, those who are against uh, revolution are those who are either benefiting from this rot or they are looking forward to becoming a beneficiary of the rot. But whether they like it or not, eh? Revolution will happen. He strongly believes that. But before I go to Shorem, we'll go to Germany. Do you know that Kolu is in Germany right now? As usual, he's doing his Zebulaba Bala Blue and all other nonsense. But I picked few where he kind of stole the Germanese that uh, their money is safe in Nigeria. They should bring their money to Nigeria. He actually told them nothing new, nothing, nothing sensible. Just talk. Normally, when you see your, uh, when you see people who are not demented leading a country, okay, I'm very sure of what they have to offer. They will present what they have to offer numerically, fact for facts, and all of that. You know what I mean? Like uh, stats that uh, these people can actually work with not just a word of mouth but i'm sorry if it's gonna get you bored it's just it should be shared okay first call you arrived So after that, before they have, uh, before they had their uh, forum, like they will have a table like that, where uh, uh, people will sit and then uh, the audience, media, and all of those who begin to ask questions, and they'll be directing their questions to the people on the high table. So before that time, okay, everyone who came from Africa, they went to Berlin to go and discuss to go and discuss Africa and how Europe can help Africa, eh? including the GI ant of Africa, the crippled the giant of Africa, led by the demented the Kolu. And before they get on stage, at least you need to get to know yourselves. You need to have something to say. I mean, you know, you should be able to say something and say, well, in Nigeria and all of that, kind of engaging intelligent conversation. I will be to call you. See, call you. It's like that uh, old man will get dementia. And because uh, before he got dementia, he was a, he was a security guard. And once in a while, they just would like to take him out and make him, I mean, just pretend that he's walking. You know that kind of thing? They'll take him out and make him pretend like he's, he's walking a security guard. And it's a senior one, maybe a supervisor security guard. even though it's not guiding anybody. If he pain you, eh, Baba, you go manage him because that will be more. Then they put a call on stage. I promise you, I didn't know. I mean, I, I actually have no idea what the question that they asked him was. But from his answers, I also promise you, he is not answering the question they asked him. 
And if you are doubting me, maybe we should just see it together. Whatever sense you make out of it, apart from it, bring your money to Nigeria. Your money is safe. And all other word salad. Like, you see, in Africa, especially in Nigeria, where we have the population, it should be a pointer to going to Saturn from there to uh, maybe uh, to, the, to, to the solar eclipse that would then lead to the climate change that would change the hope is here for these young people, Africa of tomorrow and yesterday in uh, eternity. Did that make any sense? Guy, I was talking nonsense, Abby. Call who talks like that. Because that's mostly what I kind of hear him say when he's trying to sound intelligent by trying to just either manufacture figure from the thin air or just talk jargons from Aurelia, we're talking about uh, uh, Aurelia Gigi, Abia Gigi. And you are there, okay. Hmm, Agigi, Agigi. And then from there, it just take you there straight to Suleja. So when you now turn from, like when you are in Agigi like this, so when you turn right, mm -mm, when you turn left, eh, you will be at the upper upper side to Suleja's Emias uh, Palace. The Emias Palace is at the end of uh, that Suleja before you ne now go to Shokoto. That's the way I kind of hear uh, whenever Kolu is talking. That is why whenever I want to listen to Kolu, I don't listen to him like I want to pick up anything intelligent from what he's saying. Either what salad, jargons that doesn't really add up and all that. But he talks anyway. Then it cracks me up. I mean, on the lighter parts now, when I listen to him, I just list, feel like I'm listening to an old man, a very, very old, a very sick old man who just was, I mean, who used to be very smart, intelligent, crooked, and shady. But he's old and he's sick. Eh? So every now and then, when he sort of remembers his good old days, he reminisces them and he relates them. No matter how long ago that happened, he reminisces them and kind of bring them to life right now. And then you begin to laugh. I say, ah, Papa, Grandpa, sit down. I joke. Ah, Grandpa, you are too funny. This is not 1960, sir. This is 2023. And they will tell you, you don't know anything. What is the difference? When we were younger like you, when I say, oh, bye bye, Lord Joko, relax. That's another way I see Kolu when he speaks. But there are some other brainless people who actually listen to Kolu. And they feel like any of his word means anything that will make their lives better. In your own surprise, Emil, that the only surprise I do get that educated people will listen to Kolu. And they will say they believe that he knows what he's saying and what he is doing. In six months, he... anyway, Mo go listen. May not be like saying adjust me. I'll come back to show right? Yes, no, or what are the impediments? Uh, I say yes because uh, the promotional effort of and the Chancellor has visited to Africa recently. Is equally an indication that Europe is serious to do business with Africa. The good governance promotion in all sectors of our economy in Africa and stability of governance in Nigeria in particular, I would say, it is an indicator that, yes, changes are at the door, not uh, far off. Equally, we should continue to understand the data of Africa. When you look at Nigeria alone, the vehicular density of that country.
call for a sincere commitment to assembly plants, various auto parts, automotive parts, and all that. You can invest. There is no way if good governance in your corporate body is employed, there is no way you will lose money. That is that. Yes, uh, on Simmons, I agree that near obsolete equipment is not the answer, it's not the solution to what we needed in Africa. The critical path to success is to be able to leapfrog from where we are today to the next generation of development. And we are opening the door for all of that. The energetic population of youth and well-educated population that is available is enough to attract in, in, in every business human resources is a great capital incentive for investors. Yes, rule of law is a must because business, yes, may be cowardly. If you are bogged down in bigger, you know, bureaucratic uh, problems, you might not have the necessary investment that you expect. We are reforming the rule of law. We are adhering to that. And we definitely will continue to promote the opportunity given today by Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you, His Excellency Tinubu. I told you, eh, you'll be hearing big, big words. Okay? And then uh, at a point, you will be like, okay, it's about to make sense. But person they speak English. English that everybody listened to just now. If I ask you to start writing it down, eh? A lot of you, eh, Mark Begbagini, person where they speak English, but they will still need the interpreter. Somebody will still have to tell you, you don't understand. He's talking about a uh, business opportunity in Nigeria because Nigeria has the population, the density. Nigerians have for uh, a vehicular density. So they is telling them to come and set up assembly plants in Nigeria. Sure you get. Uh, and then uh, all the bureaucrat immigrant bagbe. They will do everything to kind of begin to explain to you as Oh, Benny, I heard what he said. That is not how he said it. Why are you the one trying to explain to me? Uh, is, that, is, is that how he said it? Why can't he say the way you said it? Without going about here and there and all of that, that doesn't really make any tangible sense. But this guy will disagree. Shitty man. I shadow him in terms of brand name recognition, in terms of intellect, in terms of capacity, even in terms of in the particularity. So, by shadow. New Zans, the lady. New Zans, the lady. You get our Raul, our Mejiji, eh, to gay for Sangbeto, at the Sangbedu. Sangbeto, yeah, that's Sangbeto, that one is, eh, Tifnumbu, eh, Sagbendu, Sagbendu, or somebody said, as a big bomb, volume or in your sobel. That you call an asagbe bomb, I've been asagbendu, bendu. Now the two people where they in charge of Nigeria be that, and you won't get economy like China, economy like America. She, she and Sony. Eh? She would have said. Let's start with this one. It is pointless chasing a rat when your house is on fire. Nigeria needs a revolution or else. Nigerians must understand that unless something drastic happens, we cannot have elections that are won on the basis of ideas. As things stand in Nigeria today, 
as successive governments have destroyed the basis for any progressive politics. You cannot have a country where young people who are brilliant, who have ideas, are told to run for councillors, while people with antiquated ideas are recommended to be presidential candidates. And even they become president. That's why the country is the way it is today. Unless a revolution happens in this country, same way they had in Sudan, probably in Nigeria, it's going to be difficult to have free and fair elections. I am saying it so that we are not under any illusion that somehow, if we continue to talk, it is not a battle of wits, that the democratic space will open for us to have a country where good people, great ideas can lead the country. As we chanted during our recent protest march in Maryland area of Lagos, in Nigeria, where just five people will be richer than 200 million people, call it work. In Nigeria, where your neighbor bill is greater than your house rent, call it work. To the skeptics who say Nigerians are too apathetic and divided to rise up for a revolution or up to a revolution, I say this, Hunger doesn't know ethnicity, insecurity doesn't know religion, and when Nigeria becomes a better place, it won't matter where you come from. The time for revolution is now, and it will not be. Thank you, show. But a lot of people who don't like his face, you are going to take that message eventually because these guys are going to push you to that stage very, very soon. We are getting there closely, closely. When they touch and touch and touch everyone, eh? I want to replay this if you don't mind. The economy that... Uh, it's going to get better. Again, no, now this woman, no. Those ones that they say they fly at night and with broom. Ah, those ones are not your problems. The witches and wizards, they tell you travel at night or come in form of bats or old. Those ones are not your problem. In Luke chapter 9, Jesus, the Bible says Jesus gave them authority and power over all the devil. That means... The Okapata of all the devils and all his words, followers. The witches and wizards in Nigeria, they are small devils. God has given you authority and power over the big one. How much that one? And in Mark chapter 16, he says, nothing shall hurt you. You shall not be hurt. The witches and wizards I'm talking about, they are in the presidency, in the national assembly, in the senate, in government houses. They are civil servants. They are politicians. They are houses, Igbos, Yorubas. They are Catholics, Pentecostals, Protestants, Christians, Muslims. Those are the witches and wizards that kill more people in Nigeria. In fact, the other witches, I don't even know whether they have killed anybody. But these particular witches or wizards I'm talking about, they are responsible for thousands of deaths. If you are giving money to do road, and you don't do the road, and somebody has an accident because of bad road and die, what do you think you are? You are a witch. You have taken blood. You are giving money to equip hospitals. You refuse to build the hospital or even equip. And the medication or medical attention that would have saved somebody is not only the person that's. What do you think you are? It's a witch. We have them all over the place. That in Nigeria, pensioners will be queuing to take their pension of 50,000. And they wait and wait until some will die. Because somebody doesn't want to push their fine. Or somebody has swallowed the money meant for their pension. And you tell me you are a human being. No, you are a winch. Witch is sweet. You are a winch. Winch. And a huge one, a winch. Those are the ones you should be afraid of. Forget about these ones that uh, some men of God tell you that. Those are not the ones. The witches and wizards that have killed destinies in Nigeria, they are presidents, governors, senators, members of House of Rep, civil servants, and contractors. Those are the ones that have killed... All these deliverance you are running about for people to release your days. Those who are holding your days in they are in Asoroku. I am very serious about it. It's not the small witches they say they are flying up and down. Those ones, they are looking for blood. If they don't see your blood, they will go and chop fruit and rest. You survive this kind of people in Nigeria, you should be happy. There's another set of witches and wizards, though. fake pastors and men of God. Those ones who have given people wrong pseudo-religious theories they have destroyed marriages bankrupted businesses and made people to start thinking backward 
They even block you from seeing where your real problem is coming. Men of God are coming to a family and brother will become afraid of his own brother. Relatives will no longer eat their food. Before you even shake a relative, you remember what they told you, that they are transferring power. If you have survived all these forces, just know that Psalm 91 is working in your life. He said a thousand may fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right. You, it will never approach because his faithfulness is buckler and shield. He said your eyes have only to look to see how the wicked are repaid. He has given his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. It can also be Psalm 1, 2, 5. Those who put their trust in the Lord, they are like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken, that stands firm forever. And as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. Help me tell somebody, God has surrounded you. God has surrounded you. That is the reason you are alive today. And I pray that you continue to surround you all the days of your life. Father uh, Uloma, is that not his name? Eh? Father Uloma, a very brilliant uh, soul. Seriously. This, you see that uh, preaching? That was how the Christian body led the civil rights movement in America that has inspired generations outside America. There are many of, of your uncles eh, who got inspired politically because of the civil rights movement in America. Eh? Guess those behind that. Hmm? The church. The Protestants, the, all the churches, especially black churches. They funded them. They spoke against the injustice that... Uh, they were suffering at the time. Racial justice, uh, economic uh, injustice, racial injustice, and all of that. Church. They're preaching the open. They're preaching their, uh, in their churches. They're preaching everywhere. They encourage those who are not even Christians also to join them. And they made a mark. That's how they used to preach. They tell the people the truth. They tell them the truth. In Nigeria, when you tell the people the truth, they will say you are trying to make the people hate the government, hate the criminals who are ruining their lives. So if you stand up and say, oh my God, we are not taking this out, this is too much and all that, they will say you are doing so because you hate them, not because you are screaming as a victim of their actions. So you need people like that to tell the people. You have them in Nigeria most too, who, talk, who speaks like that man. Oh. It's just that uh, you don't really get to see them all the time. There are those who are bold enough to tell their people the truth. The people behind your destiny, all these uh, village people, witches and wizards, that, even they themselves, eh? That they ask for money to shop now, witches and wizards. They are not after your blood or anything. The people who are after your life are those who continue to make sure that you don't have health care, you don't have uh, education, you don't have job, your businesses are dying. They, those who are devaluing your life, they are the witches and wizards. She, I never tell you that one before. Show. Sure. Let me wrap them up. If you take extreme measures, nobody needs all these, all these lectures. Nobody needs it. That time, if the rebel leader drops a voice note, all of you will find data to listen to it because your survivor depends on it. Those of us who are still doing this are the most civil, you know, civil, I won't say civilized, amongst us. The second aspect of it, which is very, very important, is that you are not going to take Nigeria back on the back of the system they have in place now. You are not going to take Nigeria back with an election. It's not happening because right now, the next set of people that will be in the next election were selected three days ago. And what some of them are people who read the elections that the state, you know, the worst election rigging machines are the state electoral commissions in Nigeria. Let me also spoil your evening that the next set of Supreme Court justices, because already they are saying that 10 is not enough, will be selected by uh, Tinubu. So imagine with Tinubu selected, appointed Supreme Court justices, 
his own family directoral commission how you are going to win even councillorship election. And when you don't win, they will ask you to go to court. Go and ask in Abuja all the new judges that were recently selected to be in the FCC High Court were relatives of former judges or their children or wives or their girlfriends. So, I'm sorry to say, you are screwed. Yes. Except you dig yourself out of this hole. And I'm not afraid to say it, and I'll repeat it any day, anywhere, anyhow, that except there's a revolution, Nigeria cannot be liberated on the platform of, if you like, you can hand me. Let me just finish. If you like, you can hand me 20 microphones. They are tone deaf. They don't listen to this anymore. And the security agents are there to do their bidding, even when they haven't paid them their salaries. I have a bunch of policemen who talk to me as they are senior police officers. Anytime they don't pay their allowances, they call me. Three days ago, one of them called me. Ah, Mr. Ashu, they haven't paid our allowances again, though. I said, they haven't. They said, yes, this new IT hasn't paid. Our allowances. He listed all the allowances, plenty of them. I said, okay, that's very good. What do we do? Ah, we need Sahara to blow it up. It's okay. We, uh, Sahara can blow it up, but if people go out to fight for you to get your allowances, you are the stupid people that will shoot them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the excuse will be the same. Uh, we are just doing our job. It's order from above. So, if the order from above is not to pay your allowances, the order from above is also telling me not to report it. You know, so our bulls are talking to us. But I don't want to reduce this matter to something too funny. It is just to give you how dire our situation is. I've been repeating it several that in the history of this country, the last leader is always better than the new one. Yes. I won't be surprised if people start apologizing to Buhari. Yes, from the end of this year. And you might be surprised that the University of Alabama uh, might invite Buhari to come and be giving speeches here <laughs> to talk about how he ran a fantastic <laughs> economy, a fantastic economy during his tenure, where the Naira was stable, and how he was protecting the interests of Nigeria. In fact, he might be looking at my name a hall after he does it, he doesn't even name the university. After him. That is where we are. And that's what I want you to ponder on as young people. Uh, one last thing I wanted to correct is this idea that the people who are living in the country are young. Everybody's living. Old, young, you know, people who can walk, carry people who cannot walk. Everybody is living. And there's no longer limitation to where Nigerians are going to. If you get to a point where Nigerians are moving to Ukraine, you know you are in trouble. I know this, this is not a joke. I mean, I don't know if you guys knew that we're just trying to save a young lady from Iraq. Because she's from Ibadan. Yes, I think she's from here, from your state. She went and she's living in and her boss, she offended her boss. Now they want to stone her to death for something by the end of the year. And the first thing when I was told, the message came through my Facebook Messenger. I asked the person, I, said, I don't know if I asked him, but I was surprised. Is there any Nigeria in Iraq? <laughs> but when the story played out, I discovered that it's not only in Iraq, there are a lot of Nigerians in Libya. Yes, they said there's a place in uh, Tripoli where the Amalade is better than the one in Ibadan, Amalaska here. 
because Nigerians will go to anywhere else but live here. And I just want to leave you with this sad thought. I'm sorry, I don't have anything else to tell you. How many times would they tell you before you know that Nigeria is not for you? Ah! Now they never leave you. They have left you behind. Photo. Not be juju be that. I'm sorry, yo. Oh, sorry, yo. Oh. May God not allow them to them kill you. 70 years old, man. I am mumu I too much. You be mumu. You think they they wise? Ah! Mumu, man. If you continue, like Shore said, though, everybody is leaving. Those who cannot walk, they are carrying those, those who can walk, they are carrying those who cannot walk. And you your delay. And like he also said, eh? People are already right now. He said that uh, he won't be surprised when uh, people will begin to apologize to Bokwari. People have not started apologizing to Bokwari, but they are already saying it all more. Ah, Bokwari time better. The people that never believed that Nigeria Naira will cross 200 Naira. Today, it has crossed 1,000 Naira. Now they are remembering Bo Excuse me, they are remembering Bokwari. So that's why Shoret said, where do you want to start from? Group yourselves again. Go and get PVC. Eh? And then once they rig you, you go to court. Tiff Numbu is appointing justices for the Supreme Court now. He's going to appoint justices for appeal court, all the courts in Nigeria. He's going to fill them up with his own people. Uh -huh. If he feels like Yakubu has too much, uh, uh, what the baggages, he can change him by 2025. He will remove him, put another person there. And that one will be what? Loyal to who? Do you think he's going to be loyal to you? So you want to go into election with these people, right? <laughs> Smart gone. Anyway, I want to take calls so that I'm not going to be like, am I going to spend a while? Let's take calls. So I'm going to take calls tonight, okay? But uh, the line is going to be opened in a minute. Now, if you have been watching since and you haven't really uh, liked the video, pay your own offering. You can take your time and do so now. Like the broadcast, okay? And then uh, I will be back. Maybe in about 30 seconds. The line is going to be opened in a minute. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, let's uh, let's get uh, on with uh, that. I don't want to sit here and refill all my strategy. <laughs> I, I, I'm the first speaker among the three of us running. So they will spy on me. <laughs> so you will have a limited answer here today. <laughs> Another day, you can bring me back. But that's part of what I do. Call you. Now, when you got uh, in that same Germany, we don't know what's going to happen again. Oh. Eh? They have to put him at... Uh, it's like somebody will say, you can easily... You know, all the people waiting inside this video, I mean, this picture, they can easily just cut him off like he's never there. Abba, giant of Africa. Oh, God. I have a first caller. Hello there. Hello, my ego, my brother. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm fine. My name is Charles. I'm calling from Nigeria. Sir Charles. Where are you calling from in Nigeria, yes. by the way? I'm calling from Niger State. I'm a Niger first time caller. Hmm. Yeah. That means that you are the first time caller then. I've never spoken to anybody from Niger State. Wow. How are you, Charles? Yes, I'm fine. Great. It has been a it has been a very good two weeks. I started uh, watching my English diary. Oh dear. I have an inspiration. Yes, and uh, most of the things you are saying, it's like you are talking from my innermost mind. I think I'm the one speaking. Right. That's nice. the way you you view Nigeria. The way you see Nigeria is how I've I saw Nigeria for a very long time. Even I discuss it with most of my friends, but they will not, they will they will find it difficult to understand. Probably because I'm an Igbo man living in the north, they feel I'm 
been kind of a, a bias against their people or yeah, such things like that. I get that. It's like they always, they always uh, treat your opinion uh, based on where or who you are or where you come from. So they are not really yeah. interested in uh, seeing through. I get that too. Hmm. Yeah. And do you know that all these agitators, people talking, both Soweri, both Nambikano, both Mayego, we are just asking for one thing. And these people don't want to listen. And what is that? A good Nigeria, a place that works where for everyone. everybody, mm -hmm. everybody can be treated equally. That's right. That no, no more knowledge. Do you know that if in if the Nigerian government can call in them the canoe or Sunday Boho or whoever to come to a, a round table to discuss Nigeria, and those guys are ready to discuss on a better Nigeria. You know, that is uh, if they are willing to actually obey. Any that is if, hmm. yes, if they are willing, which they are not ready and they are not willing. No, and. To, to me, uh, to me, I, I would not like to take most of your your time. And I want That's other right. callers to call. I'm very happy, very very glad that uh, I'm able to call. The other day, yesterday, I mean, the day we talk about the uh, black tax, I called. I was first. I uh, was the first person to call because of the situation of Nigeria network yes. problem. Oh, uh, I, I was. Uh, yeah. I couldn't yes, connect I you. Couldn't I waited talk. for a few seconds. And I'm like, yes, okay, yes, maybe yes, you yes. call back, but. It became busier. Mm. Yeah, I tried calling back, but I was unable to connect. That that is it. So I'm glad that and, you did uh, tonight. It's okay, of, it's such a pleasure speaking uh, to you. I'm very very glad. I'm happy. It's, you, uh, it's it's an, a pleasure to speak. Just take it easy, bro. So right? keep on. Uh huh. And uh, we are taking it easy. I will. Actually, that yeah, black cast that you talk about, as if you talk to me. It's not oh, really? only the people in Africa, but it's not, yeah, it's not Nigeria. only people abroad yes. now. Even all of you in Nigeria, there are many of yes. you who are drowning in black taxes. See, I'm, I'm, I'm also, I'm, I'm also, I'm also a victim of that. Do you know that I almost the the, the first time I know when 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 people talk about depression, hmm. you just hear it. It's and you feel like it, I, that can I, never happen to you. Me depressed. Yes. Me, 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 a street guy yes. depressed. But it can happen. I, hmm. I, I actually. I actually experienced what they call depression, and the, so and the, what brought about it is flat tax. And I'm in Nigeria. I'm just you know, few few weeks, few months that I'm trying to put myself together out of it because so I have to move on. In no recovery, matter what. Yeah, trying to get yourself back and trying to get yourself mm -hmm. on and all that. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I'm currently I'm so sorry. in that. I'm so sorry, so, man. Ah, no, no problem. Okay. I mean, uh, I'm glad yeah. that uh, you have a place where you can cool off every evening after uh, all the stress of the day. Yeah. Things to just put your mind together in a yeah. place uh, yeah. and, you know, getting for that, that's enough. And I'm glad that uh, you yourself have uh, said that this platform has been of great help to some extent, okay? And I hope uh, yeah, it continues yeah. to be until that's you it. get yourself back on. Okay, Baba? Let's take it easy, okay? Yeah. Thank you, Charles. Yeah. Take care. Okay. That's a Charles uh, from a Niger state. I didn't bother asking where in Niger, but being the first uh, time I'm speaking to somebody from Niger state in Nigeria, that sort of uh, swept me swept me off my uh, feet. So, thank you so much, Charles, for calling. I have another caller on the line. Hello there. Are you good, General? Yes, good evening. sir. Yeah, this is CA from Atlanta. Oh, CA. I kind of got you again from here Atlanta. today. I know, yeah. I know. CA from Atlanta. Baba, how are you today? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, CA. I, I, I didn't want to call on the day of that black tax because <laughs> I, live in the, I live in the U.S., but I was listening to everything. It is similar to everybody, different mm -hmm. stories. You know, hardly uh, anyone has uh, suffered it, but yes. you know, it's like a good yeah. and bad stories. And good and bad, end, yes, right? good and everyone bad. who has experienced yeah. either of them can at least feel and good they, or feel you know sort of you know about the, the entire the entitlement mentality of people back home is astonishing it's unbelievable Baba, tell me about it hmm. you know people call you that you, i recently sent some money down hmm. the person that gave the largest amount they didn't call 
to say thank you. you just send a text. Not even thank you. You just send a text. You just send it. You just send a text. That's it. Hey. You know the person I gave the list was the one that called me, mm. thanking me. And when I gave him, I, I thought the money was so little. I was even ashamed to give him that kind of guy. That give him that kind of money. He was so appreciative, calling me. Mm. You know. So about Nigeria, like like the first caller said, we had the same ideology from day one. But people still don't understand. I don't know whether they are blind. I don't know. They refuse to understand what is going on in that country. But I think they well, do understand well, we what they mostly, right? You know, why the majority we never have yet uh, CA is that uh, the majority of those who are actually going to do what they should do. A lot of people know what is going on. A lot of people are currently doubting uh, should we do this or should we not? Once we get to a stage where we all agree on those uh, three things I mentioned earlier, right? Baba? Yeah. I don't think anything will hold anybody back anymore, but we just haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, I think I think uh, what we have now is a big trigger. It's going to, it's gradually, it's like the clock, it's, it's like a time bomb that is set for maybe 10 minutes, ticks every second, bit by bit, keep ticking, keep ticking. I think it's going to get the time, to 100. it's going to explode. Hmm. It's going to explode. Hmm. Because for what we have now, like I told my younger brother, when you are greedy, you are greedy. You cannot change it. You can't change it. When you are greedy, you are earning billions. The guy that is earning ten thousand dollars, ten thousand naira, you want to take from that ten thousand naira, hmm. which are billions. Hmm. Is that that is that the kind of uh, leaders we have now? Exactly. Thank you, thank you, hmm. Mayego. I just God let me let all that go. Thank you so much yeah. as well for stopping by today. Everyone has a story when it comes to black tax, no doubt. And if you did miss out uh, during the day, I mean, during the program on that day, of course, you can still call in, but we just won't give you that much time like that of today, okay? So you may mention it, be brief, and then go on to the uh, to this uh, issue. I have a caller. That should be Ken. Is that you? Yes, my good Ken, general. how are you? Kenneth? I'm fine, are you? Well, I'm very well too. Thanks for asking. It's good to hear from you, Baba. Yeah, please keep me in your prayers. So I got I got four weeks to go before I enter that jungle called Nigeria. <laughs> so I, I got, got four weeks to go. I know what my prayer point will be, sir. Okay. Should I keep <laughs> you in prayer that you just came back? Or should I keep no, you in no, prayer no. that you are still there? No, no, I'm getting ready to. Oh, be there okay, that's third one. Or should I? Should we keep you in prayer that you are about to go in there? Yes, that, that's right. that, that's the one. You've done nothing wrong than to just understand where you are going. You know the rule, right? You know the rule. I do. Okay, like I'll I tell everyone on here, and like you yourself have actually told people on this platform, right? Whenever you know mm -hmm. you are going to Nigeria, the day, the time, mm -hmm. and every other thing should be kept to yourself. Okay. And if you have to make yeah. a provision for, uh, you know, those who are going to come and see you and all of that, sometimes mm -hmm. you probably will have to tell them just the moment you are boarding. They have no idea when you are coming or what have you, but I mean, keep things mm -hmm. to yourself. And when you have to be in Nigeria as well, it is ideal mm -hmm. to keep a low profile. Sure you get, yeah. you know, Americans, eh, you say, oh, no, they carry well, well. So you don't <laughs> just keep the low profile, enjoy every moment of it. Don't argue with their policemen. Don't even question no. them. Walk away from them if you can. And wherever you can, mm -hmm. bribe them and give them money just to escape their danger. Don't stand your ground. Mm -hmm. Don't prove any right there, please. Mm -hmm. They are very simple. Mm -hmm. point. It's simple advice, okay? And I want to see you oh, yeah. safely. Remember that. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Bless I you. appreciate a lot. God bless like you. We, yeah, you. Sir. Yeah. Yeah, let me just chip in my contribution to every was uh, I think it was a few days ago where you made a statement about uh, was it black tax and all those things? Of course, it, the black tax that has ruined a lot of people and it has also make and uh, that it has also made a lot of people who have no regrets. So you hear mm -hmm. that? So yeah, so you know, like what everybody said, even including that interview uh, granted to Mikel Rubi, that he made those points. To be honest with you, everything he said there is absolutely true, and it's still currently happening. It it's is. still currently happening. There is look, I I have like two cars back home. Uh, these two cars are they are mostly SUV, and 
I always I do my best to make sure that I tell them, please run this car, let this car be moved because when they are stationary, they become yeah. more problem. They could go get uh, yeah. even electrical problems, you know, where rats could cut out the cables and all that. Yeah. Right. Yes. My book, can you believe that I will give these people money? In fact, the list, the list is almost like between eight hundred to a million naira. Eight. I I will still be hearing complain. Even sometimes when I get there, the car, the way the car will drive, sometimes the way I will hearing sound, I'm like. So I mean, all this freaking money I'm giving you guys, where what the hell is going on? Uh, are you telling me that you can't get this car up and running to this thing? My God, at the end of the day, guess what? Wow. When I do my own private investigation, mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Do you know that my family member mm -hmm. and the people the item are in cohus? Uh -huh. Mostly, there is always somebody that is actually very close to you that you trust. Exactly. So you get now. There are those who are, you know, once those ones are falling, every other mm -hmm. frost stars will get to you, and they will use him. Exactly. It's so sad. Exactly. Exactly. My if it is somebody says sister, if it is your brother, mm -hmm. if it is your mom, mm -hmm. if it is your dad, mm -hmm. eh, that mm -hmm. falls under yeah. that anointing of greed. It doesn't matter how much they love you or how much you love them. You see, whatever mm -hmm. they are doing. They will not even see that they are destroying you slowly. They won't see it as mm -hmm. that. They will just see it as entitlement. Ah, Shabir, am I not your blood? 